On a Sunday in Arizona, the Marlins and the Diamondbacks will finish off a entertaining series. Marlins got game one, Diamondbacks answered in come from behind fashion last night. And on a Sunday, there's Marlin fans here. Chance to grab an autograph, JT Real Muto and the Fish. Our team Prado, a former Diamondback, Giancarlo Stanton still trying to get back on track on an Adam Conley start. Hi everybody, Rich Waltz along with Preston Wilson for the Marlins, an opportunity to win this series and even things out as far as this road trip. Well, this would be a great one for them to get. I think they feel like they got a good matchup with the Diamondbacks. They just have to execute well, not give too many extra base runners, and take care of the defense. Let's talk hitting. This is a great environment for hitters. And one of the strengths of Miami this year has been hitting. They're third right now in the National League in total batting average. And you look across four hitters above that 300 mark. And you know what? They all have distinctly different styles. Well, they all do it a different way, but they're all doing it in the same manner. What I mean by that is they all have a game plan. Each hitter has different strengths, but they have an idea when they're going up there, what they're looking for, what they're trying to accomplish, and they've been doing much better homework on these opposing pitchers to understand what they have and how they're trying to attack the Marlin hitters. All right, so you saw Ozuna, you saw Prado, and of course Christian Yelich with that sweet swing from the left side. People forget JT Real Muto's having a real nice year. Really good year. He's showing some great progress at the plate. Gotten a little bit closer in the plate and just really is being more aggressive. I think sometimes when you're a young guy, you're trying to impress your coaches. You start thinking a little bit too much. With JT Real Muto, it's been react for him lately and it's been working. We're glad you're with us today here in Phoenix as the Marlins and the Diamondbacks get set to finish things off for the fish head to San Diego. This is an Adam Conley start. And he'll take on the Diamondbacks when we return.
getting ready to play game three of this three game series for everyone at Fox Sports Florida our hearts and our prayers are with the people of Orlando after the unspeakable tragedy last night Ladies let's go to Chuck Drago the PA voice here in Phoenix and please remove your hats Ladies and gentlemen, we awoke this morning to the news of a horrific event that took place in Orlando, Florida in the early morning hours of last night. At this time, as a tribute to all those who lost their lives and for their families and friends who are suffering right now, the Miami Marlins and Arizona Diamondbacks ask that you join us in a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the field as we honor the United States of America and pay tribute to our veterans, active duty, and retired men and women of our armed services. Presenting our colors today, please welcome members of the El Zariba Shrine Color Guard. The Arizona Diamondbacks and the Miami Marlins invite you to join in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner performed by members of the El Zariba Shrine. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the Ladies and gentlemen, members of the Elza Reba Shrine.
Chase Field in Phoenix. As the Marlins and the Diamondbacks get ready to go, that is Robbie Ray, the 24 year old out of Brentwood, Tennessee. His record at 2 and 5. He has not fared well of late. And the Marlins beat him back on May 5th in a tight ball game. And Robbie Ray throws a strike to JT Real Muto. Martin Prado, Christian Yelich also coming up here in the first inning. Last night, Jose Fernandez was sailing. Diamondbacks came roaring to life and won that ball game five to three. Miami captured game one with a wild outburst in the seventh inning by a score of eight to six. And Real Muto leads it off. He homered last night. Don Mattingly's got some righty bats in there. Derek Dietrich is in the lineup. And Ray misses outside. The count is one and two. Of the last nine starts that Robbie Ray has made, the Diamondbacks have lost eight of those nine starts, and his ERA is at about six and a half. So this is a left-hander, Preston, that's trying to find his groove, trying to get back to where he was early in the season. Well, he definitely cannot live in the middle of the strike zone. He has to work on the edges. He has to work down. And more importantly, he has to be able to keep the hitters guessing because he doesn't have the stuff that if you're looking for what he's throwing, you're going to hit it. Fastball misses out. Angel Hernandez is behind home plate. Will Little at first. Ted Barrett at second. Lance Barksdale is at third. And a 2 2 pitch to JT Real Muto. It's out. An appeal. And no swing, says Will Little. So from 0 2 to 3 2. Pitch number seven coming to JT. And he got him. With a fastball, Real Muto strikes out. Miami's lineup on this afternoon game here in Arizona brought to you by U Health Sports Medicine. Real Muto, Prado, and Yelich are the top three. Marcelo Zuna, Giancarlo Stanton, and Chris Johnson are in the middle. 7 8 9, Dietrich, Rojas, Conley. And here's Prado. Four hits last night, including his second triple of the year. Martin checks in at 323. The Marlins have three hitters in the top seven in the National League with Ozuna, Prado, and Yelich resting there. Real Muto actually sneaks in in the back, so four hitters in the top 12. There is Yelich on deck. As well, Prado pretty good against lefties. As are the Marlins as a team. Best winning percentage against lefty starters, though they've only seen 12 of those games. They're 9 and 3 in those 12. Well, that's what Robbie Ray's got to do right there if he's going to have success against this team, and that's be able to work both sides of the plate with that fastball, command both sides, and that's going to open up his off speed stuff and keep these hitters from zeroing in on a zone and on a particular pitch. Still a young pitcher. He's 24. Originally drafted by the Nationals. That's a swing. Prado puts his hands up, looking down in disbelief to Will Little. And he's on his way to the dugout. Here's a look. Little says strike. It's tough. And Yelich stands in. And so Robbie Ray off to a, a quick start with a pair of strikeouts. Tony's done it by staying out of the middle of the plate. Expanded the fastball up there on Real Muto. Ball off the edge, got a little bit of chase from Prado. Yelich cracks one to left. O'Brien goes back and over, and he makes the catch. 
You know, one, two, three firsts. Here come the Diamondbacks. And here comes Adam Conley. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. By your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. And by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Oh, look at downtown Phoenix. Diamondbacks with this batting order brought to you by U Health Sports Medicine. Dean Segura, Drury, Goldsmith at the top, Castillo, Peralta, O'Brien are in the middle. Nick Ahmed, Robbie Ray, batting agents, pitcher, Michael Bourne is ninth, playing center field. Here's Adam Conley now as he goes to work. There are lefties on this afternoon in Phoenix. Gene Segura, Brandon Drury, Paul Goldschmidt. Conley likes to work quickly, and his breaking ball misses in. A ball and a strike to Segura. Segura one for four last night, couple hits in the opener and he really is having a, a, a nice year for the Diamondbacks. A dozen doubles. Four triples five homers he's got power in the leadoff spot. And Conley's falling behind three and one. Up the middle and by the diving Miguel Rojas. Gene Segura has got a hit. To open up Arizona's first. Southwest brings you Miami's defense. No change in the outfield with Yelich, Ozuna, and Stanton. A couple changes in the infield. Martin Prado, and you got Chris Johnson starting at first. And Miguel Rojas gets a start at short with Derek Dietrich and JT Real Muto is behind the plate. And here is Drury, whom the Marlins saw a lot of in that series in Miami. Conley trying to keep the running game in check. This is still a relatively young team in Arizona. And Drury is one of the young players that the Diamondbacks are excited about out of Grants Pass, Oregon. 13th round pick originally by the Braves. He came to the Diamondbacks with Martin Prado and a few others in the uh, Justin Upton trade. Nick Ahmed and Randall Delgado were some of the others that came in that trade. Upton and Chris Johnson went from Arizona to Atlanta. So a lot of guys involved in that trade are here and playing in this ballgame. Prado. 
Johnson. And of course Drury to center. Ozuna gets a good look at it. Segura won't tag. Conley has his first out of the first inning. And here comes Paul Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt's been active four for eight and has scored a couple of runs. He was one for four last night. He had one of the more curious plays on defense late in that ball game. Pops it up first base side and it's out of play. He's been hot lately that's for sure. See in the last 15 games over a 400 average and he's hit the ball pretty well against the Marlins this series. Yeah, Paul Goldschmidt not only hot but now at first base on that swing he clipped the glove of JT Real Muto watch right there. And so catchers interference He's going to push Segura to second and get Goldschmidt to first. And Conley has to face Wellington Castillo with runners on. So the Diamondbacks have something going here. Castillo, his bat in the last few years has really developed. Fouls that one back to the screen. And it kind of coincided with him arriving here in Arizona. And then all of a sudden he found his power stroke. Sometimes it's a change of scenery. Sometimes it's a change of philosophy of the hitting coaches. You get somebody that just says the right thing and it makes sense to you. Everything starts to click and things start to fall in place. Last year with the Cubs, he hit a buck 63. With Seattle, he hit a buck 60. And just two home runs in those 30 games. But then arrived here, and in 80 games, he clubbed 17 homers. He slugged 496. You hear all the time about quarterbacks going to new system and saying, well, it's like speaking a whole new language. Sometimes talking to hitting coaches is that same way. Everyone has different terminologies to explain certain things. Well getting to hit here doesn't hurt either and he's kind of picked up where he left off last year he's slugging at 433 Mark Grace Dave Magadan the uh, hitting coaches for the Diamondbacks Grace an assistant Magadan is the head hitting coach. Fastball up and in. Maybe not quite as up and in as he made it look. No, you're right. The reaction, it was up, maybe not that far in. Full count, but there's one out. Runners first and second. Conley spins, making sure that Segura is not running. You've got Goldschmidt who has excellent speed and is not being held at first base. So Segura with seven stolen bases. The combination is out there if Chip Hale wants to gamble early. Not running, 3 2, and it's in. And now the bags are loaded. And it's David Peralta, left handed hitter. And it comes up. Peralta with that big triple last night. Comes up here in another chance to do some damage against the fish. Infield back for two. Conley misses outside. As Arizona tries to strike first, 
And Adam Conley, who's pitched well away from home and pitched well against this Arizona team, has hit a few bumps here in the first inning. And what he's trying to do, obviously, is avoid the major turbulence. He's facing Peralta, really good left handed bat. And if you follow the Marlins and Conley, you know that lefties actually have hit him better this year to a uh, 345 clip. Got in on him. Good pitch. Stanton coming in. Dietrich out. Dietrich makes the catch. Segura tags. Dietrich's throw is going to be late, and the Diamondbacks have that run. Ideally, you'd like the outfielder to take that ball, but I don't know that Dietrich had a choice. This is a big outfield, and Stanton had to come a long way. Even if Stanton can catch this, his momentum is taken him towards third base or towards left field. That's still going to be a tough play on a dead sprint. So it's a sacrifice pop up. You don't see too many of those. Sack four? Yes. <laughs> With an RBI. Goldschmidt did not take third. He's at second. Big lead, and they're running. Swing and a foul at the plate. Wow. Boy, if you're Peter O'Brien and you see that in front of you. How do you swing right there with those? I mean, that jump, there's no way you can't see a guy running from second base. Wow. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Thank you very much. That is a big break. Real Muto out to visit with Conley just to remind him to keep the runners a little tighter. <laughs> Like, how can you swing at that? Are you kidding me? Did you see the type of jump I had? Well, you've got a rookie here who has uh, just been called up, one of the hottest hitters in all of minor league baseball, and a former Miami Hurricane. He was there for a year in 2012. Goldie's like, I'm trying to get you two stakes right here. We're going to put two minutes in score position for you, and that's the first pitch. Braddock High School, born in Hialeah. And Conley misses in. Got a couple of hurricane ex hurricanes on this Arizona team and congratulations to the University of Miami by the way as they have advanced to the College World Series. Drilled deep down the line and gone. Well, that'll make up for it. Peter O'Brien, his second career home run. Uh, this ball's in, but it's down and in, and you can get the head to it, and he absolutely launches this thing. This ball goes a long way off of the top of the second deck wall right there. Pretty much no stride, just a little rock and fire action. Turned on him, put him in the seats. Snakes are up for nothing. Four hundred and twenty four feet. His first homer this year. He did homer last year in a brief stay in the big leagues. Nick Ahmed the hitter. And for Adam Conley. A little bump has turned into a major, major shakeup here in the first inning. And that pitch misses in. 11 first inning runs in 13 starts. Obviously, those numbers. Inflated by the four runs here. Conley, the last two times he started, actually left with a lead that the Marlins bullpen could not hold, but right now he finds himself down four nothing. 
And that one pulled hard and foul. The well, one thing if you're Miami you have to try to do at this point is keep it at four and remember that on this road trip the Marlins have come from behind twice for wins. Rojas throws it away. I don't think it went out of play and so that is going to keep Ahmed at first. The double clutch right here cost him didn't quite get it cleanly. You almost got to just eat that at that point. You're not going to get the out. The one thing is, is you can compound the error. That's going to be a base hit by uh, up throwing that in the seats and give up an extra base. That's it's clearly a base hit. Yeah. So 26 pitches in. Conley gets to face the pitcher. Robbie Ray's in the eighth spot for Arizona, but he can swing it. His last game had a couple hits, including a home run. That was against the Rays, and he knocks one into center field. Ahmed on his way to third, and the Diamondbacks have come roaring out of the gates. Here comes Michael Bourne. Juan Nieves on his way out of Miami's bullpen. This ballpark is a great place to hit. Where does it rank? All right, this season in runs per game, it's second in the National League. Hits per game, second in the National League. Since it opens, it's been very consistent, second and second. Coors Field is the one that's ahead of Chase Field in all of those categories. Chip Hale at ease right now with a 4 0 start and a chance to get more. Here's Michael Bourne. Bourne turned the game around last night. Jose Fernandez was perfect and had two outs in the sixth. Bourne got a fastball that was low and in and crushed it to right. He doesn't hit a lot of home runs, but he certainly hit that one well. And the roof fell in on Jose from there. He would give up four more hits and three more runs. And a 2 0 Marlins lead was gone in the blink of an eye. That was born last night. Homering to right. He strikes out here. 4 0 Arizona.
Miami native with a three run homer. And he is out in left field. Southwest completes the defense with Michael Bourne in center, David Peralta in right, Brandon Drury and Paul Goldschmidt the corners, Nick Ahmed, very good shortstop defensively, and then Gene Segura, former shortstop, playing second, Wellington Castillo behind the plate. And now you've got Robbie Ray with a great opportunity here. Auto Nation brings you the sky and report. What you got? Whoa, Mr. Robbie Ray. Fastball slider, those are his strikeout pitches. He goes to the fastball predominantly when he's got two strikes. Deep thoughts. Deep, deep into the game. Passes on the hog. Went to Arkansas, but he did well, committed to Arkansas, but did not go, so he passed up. Still wearing the colors, though. <laughs> That's a good point. Here's Marcel Ozuna, and Ozuna takes out Giancarlo Stanton, Chris Johnson against Ray. You see the series numbers for Ozuna that reflects the homer he hit in last night's ball game, a solo shot in the eighth. He fouls that back to the screen. Ozuna 368 on base and right now slugging a robust 557. The average on base percentage and slugging percentage in the National League right now 319 for on base and 406 for slugging. So to compare that with Ozuna 368 557 it gives you a pretty good snapshot of where he is on both of those things. His slugging percentage is good enough for sixth in the National League. Good swing stayed on that ball down and way well just fouled it off. Ozuna takes out and the count runs full at three and two. Arizona putting four on the board in the first. Hey. Ozuna liner to center. Bourne is there and he makes the catch. Get a sweet new deal, three and six game suite plans, preferred pricing, variable suite sizes, and you get to select the games you want. A six game plan with renewal also includes guaranteed tickets to the 2017 All Star Game. Secure your suite plan today, 1877 Marlin, or go to marlins.com. Now, Stanton. Part of the narrative of this road trip for the Marlins. Minneapolis and here in Arizona is can Giancarlo Stan pull out of this slump one for seven in this series he takes a fastball for a strike it's one and one Stan had a couple of hits it was two for 15 in Minneapolis. And Ray misses down low. He has slowed the strikeout rate a bit of late. Popped him up. Goldschmidt makes the catch. And there's two outs. Here's Johnson. Times like that for Stanton baseball becomes the loneliest team sport in the world. You know, it's like nobody's going to get in that batter's box with you. you know, people have asked, and, and some have written and said maybe they should sit Stanton down and let him collect uh, and regroup. And get back to basics before he gets back out on the field, but 
There's no way to simulate at bats in the major leagues. He hasn't faced that many overpowering pitchers. He's faced some lefties lately. Uh, some difficulties are due to external forces when you talk about just pitchers being good umpires making bad calls but then there's internal internal forces where you have to make sure your approach is right you have to make sure your mindset is right uh, right now really what I see is him being late uh, and just sometimes not keeping that front side in but I think it's due to him being late in his setup Johnson shoots one to the right side kicked by Segura and he recovers in time to get the out at first Robbie Ray has retired all six he's facing and the Diamondbacks is off to a quick start up four nothing. Authentic, don't they? Love the hat on the right. That is not Sam Elliott, but a Diamondback fan. A strike to Gene Segura with Brandon Drury and Paul Goldschmidt to follow. A messy first inning for Adam Conley. And they'll try to clean it up here in the second go round. Segura singled. Key play in that first was the catcher's interference on Goldschmidt. Conley would walk Wellington Castillo. And a sack fly by David Peralta. And then a three run bomb by young Peter O'Brien, the former Hurricane. And that's how you stack up four runs very quickly. Segura fouls it back. Diamondbacks are 10 under to start play at 27 and 37. Certainly not where people thought they were going to be at this point of the season. Left center, a long run. Ozuna makes a catch. And that ball's about 10 feet shy of landing in that little nest up there that sits. Just beyond dead center on both the uh, right side and the left side, a little deck. There's your standings in the West. The Giants, of course, have a four game lead. But Arizona was a uh, popular pick for a wild card or to contend in the West. And Chip Hale's team is young. They've, they have had some injury issues. A.J. Pollock, their fine outfielder, had the elbow injury and surgery. Shelby Miller. Was not effective and now is injured. Those are two big pieces that they're missing. But everybody at some point is going to miss a piece or two. 
during the course of the season. Drury flied to center back in the first. The hope here is that Miller comes back healthy and resembles the 2015 version. And he was a, a brave and was very good. Zach Grinke continues to improve. Grinke eight and three is ERA three point eight four. And then maybe some of the other young pitchers on this staff take a step or two forward. Rojas is there and he makes the catch and Conley has two outs here in the second. And that brings up Goldschmidt. Just before that catcher's interference we were talking about Goldschmidt and a defensive play last night where on a double play ball he was not on the bag and he admitted that he did lose track of the outs. So when the out was recorded at second he took a step or two towards the Arizona dugout which is on the third base side and that brought him off the bag. Well, one is a strike and it's 0 and 2. Well, there's no question he is the man and has been so here for a while. Twice he has been an MVP runner up last year in 2013. Three times he's been an all star. And the last two years he has started at first. Gold gloves got two of them. Silver slugger two of those. Rifles one to left into the corner Yelich to extract it and Paul Goldschmidt doing what he does. 11 doubles on the season. Choked up right there with two strikes. Conley tries to get one in, but Goldie with that nice short stroke, able to pull the hands through, keep that barrel flat in fair territory. And once again, he's in scoring position. If they can get David Peralta going, and Peralta had been hurt, and he's back now. And slot him in and around Goldschmidt. It's always the challenge with a player like Goldschmidt if you don't have a, a fully developed team roster around him. It's funny, the Marlins were kind of that way with Stanton for a few years. And now that Stanton is struggling, those guys that were around him are flourishing. Marcelo Zuna, Christian Yelich, off the end of the bat, and it's going to roll down the right field line, and Arizona has their fifth run. Wellington Castillo. Was so far out in front of that that it came off the end of the bat and it squirted down that first base line. Yeah, but when it's up, you got a chance. And that's what it was. Instead of that ball being swung and missed, just got it off the very tip of the bat. Kind of like a cue shot out there. Couple of two out hits. Goldschmidt's double. And here is Peralta. Sends it into left. Yelich is there and he makes the catch. The Diamondbacks not done yet. They add another and are up 5 0.
here at Chase Field. There's a pool at the ballpark. You can book this area for up to 35 people. You get access to food and drink, your own private bathroom. There's also a lifeguard. But make sure that you keep an eye on the game because there are multiple home runs that have landed in this pool. And oh, yeah, guys, one more thing. Cannonball! So you might get wet too. Very nice. Very nice. Notice she finished her report. I think she dropped the mic and ran. <laughs> Brave work out there, gents. Derek Dietrich, Miguel Rojas, and Adam Conley. Well, when these two teams met and these two pitchers met back on May 5th, it was Conley that pitched so well. And Robbie Ray ended up getting the loss, though he didn't pitch poorly. He gave up two runs in five and a third. He's out in front of Dietrich. He's retired the first six he's faced with a couple of strikeouts. They went back to the screen. He arrived here in the after a few trades originally drafted by the Nationals 2010 sent to the Tigers in the Fister trade and then a three way with the uh, Diamondbacks Tigers and Yankees he ended up here in Arizona D.D. Gregorius ended up in New York in that trade and right now Robbie Ray on top five nothing in the top of the third. Three infielders over on that right side and Dietrich bounces out. T-Mobile brings you greater coverage of baseball. Danny Duffy and the Royals snapping an eight game losing skip. The Royals tough to believe. David Ortiz last game in Minneapolis remember he was there before he arrived in Boston and Edwin Encarnacion helped beat the Orioles he keeps swinging it. Miguel Rojas now in the start at short. Adam Conley on deck. Toronto beat Baltimore 10 9. Into right, Rojas has a hit. One out single, and here comes Conley. Yeah, that's the, today's ball game. The Blue Jays, a 10 9 win over the Orioles. Russell Martin hit his fifth in that ball game. Afternoon games finished in the National League. Actually, none. Everything's uh, well there. Interleague. Cincinnati losing at home to Oakland six to one. You got Phillies and Nationals underway. Nationals a three nothing lead. Bottom three. Cubs are clobbering Atlanta 13 1 bottom eight in Atlanta. Conley trying to push the runner Rojas from first to second. Mets are trailing in the night to Milwaukee 5 3. Count 2 and 0 to Conley. But the way Drury is really crashing right here. If Conley's one of those guys that handle the bat a little better, I'd like to see him do a little slap job. A little butcher boy play. Draw him in and then slap at it, hit it by him. In that Mets Brewers game one note. Mets manager Terry Collins was taken to a local hospital after feeling ill. Prior to the game.
It was precautionary. Mets assistant general manager John Rico saying that he was alert and fine and just wasn't feeling well before the game. And they're going to run some tests. And that's uh, the last word we have out of Milwaukee. Two balls, two strikes. And Hideki Matsui homered off of David Cohn. It's old timers day at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Matsui homering on his 42nd birthday. Conley gets a piece and lines it foul. Arizona with a big first inning. Four runs in that first. Conley's bouncer. Drury to the bag. Segura, that's a difficult turn. Segura was over towards first, arrived at second, and then fired to first. And the Marlins' third is extinguished. Inside look brought to you by Toyota and the all-new RAV4. Major League Baseball drafts. The Marlins selected 39 players. There were a little over 1,200 selected overall. The majority pitchers. Marlins picking four catchers. Top 10 picks overall. When you go down to number seven, the Marlins getting a high school lefty Braxton Garrett, very highly rated. Out of Florence, Alabama, Mickey Moniak of the Phillies, the first overall pick. And Zach Collins is headed to the College World Series. He homered yesterday. I haven't seen the box today. With the University of Miami product, a White Sox pick, 10th overall in that first round. I think, and I just looked at the uh, bracket quickly, I think Miami's. Uh, First opponent in Omaha is Arizona. So you've got Arizona and Miami. Oh, Dietrich. He dropped it. He just flat out dropped it. Now, it looked like he was trying to pull it out of his glove, but the second base umpire, Ted Barrett, isn't buying. Here comes Don Mattingly out to chat with Barrett. Yeah, you have to at least secure it somewhat. And he never did. He kind of snatched it and never fully caught it. Remember the transfer rule and how prickly that got. I 
think they're I don't know if the ball will ever stop moving in this case though. That's going to be interesting to watch. But it's one of those where he went up and he tried to snatch it and bring it down and didn't really keep his eyes on it all the way through. I hope the Marlins get this call because if not that's going to be a uh, very embarrassing error for Dietrich. Umpires are on headset. We've had just the one angle. You almost need another angle to see how the ball came into his glove and how it came out. See right there, his head already started dropping, looking at where he's going to throw it. Didn't stay with the ball all the way. I'm just not sure if the ball ever stopped moving. It looked like it may have been rattling around in the glove the whole time. So apparently it is a Marlins challenge. We've seen just the two looks. Have you seen anything that's clear and conclusive that he did catch it and then lose it on the transfer? In my opinion, no. I, I, I did not see that yet. But again, it's just my opinion. I, uh, I didn't feel that the ball ever really truly stopped, that he had full control of it. And plus the glove was in motion. He was bringing it down. So it's hard for the umpire to say yes he had control of the whole time. Regardless this has been a, uh, a sloppy start for the Marlins here in this ball game. Yeah, see, when that ball hits the glove his head is already looking towards shortstop where he's going to throw it. He doesn't quite look at it and he doesn't secure it in my opinion that ball never really fully stopped. Which is secure. which is a bit odd because there's nobody on base so there's no urgency to get the ball to short. It's just a it's just a lapse in concentration. You get a little cocky you get a little uh, ahead of yourself when you're making that play and you don't quite secure it. Now Chip Hale is out. He's out. How about that. They're going to call him out. So the call overturned. Now Ted Barrett the crew chief and Chip Hale will discuss it. Wow. I, I got to say it, I'm I'm very glad the Marlins got that call. The rule coming from New York or the ruling I should say is that it came out on the transfer. So it took a couple minutes. That's a huge relief I would think if you're Derek Dietrich. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yes. 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 You don't want that on you. But what it will do is it'll sharpen him up a little bit. He's going to stay with that a little bit better next time. Ahmed on a chopper to third and Prado gets the out. Yeah, I would I think the next 50 pop ups he gets, that's going to be in his mind. He's going to make sure it gets in there yeah. before yeah, it and comes out. And not drag it off to the side like that, stay with it the whole time, especially there's nobody on base. Here's Robbie Ray now. Conley, it's a, a much cleaner inning here until Ray cranks one into right field. And the Diamondbacks. Starting pitcher has two hits. Arizona has the best hitting pitchers by numbers in the National League. They came in hitting 214 with a slugging percentage right around 300. He changed his name from Robbie Ray to Robbie the Rake. He's moving stuff all around the yard. So he's two for two. Here's Michael Bourne. Michael Bourne, Dietrich slips up and got him at first. We'll have more on that pop up when we get back with word from New York.
Ah, Sunday brunch at the Clevelander. And it's family friendly out there. You can see the prices. Adults 24, kids 10 bucks. And mimosas and Bloody Marys are just $5. So bring your, your family, bring your friends. You get a meet and greet with Marlin mascots, face painting, fun games. You can dance if you'd like to. That's Sunday brunch at the Clevelander at Marlin's Park. If you're techno savvy with baseball, you know that the replay center in Chelsea Piers in New York have the cameras and all the angles from both telecasts. And there are some Major League Baseball cameras that are in-house, including that one. And word from New York is that a low first camera not shown on either telecast was the definitive look on this play, which was overturned. It was ruled a drop. New York says catch and lost on the transfer. So you never know when someone's looking, I guess, is the yes. moral of the story. And you don't have to pull it out of your glove cleanly with your bare hand for it to be a catch. Rio Muto to short Ahmed. And there's an out. One hit for Miami, Miguel Rojas single. And Robbie Ray has been getting a lot of outs on the ground. His double play finished the third. Five outs on the ground. Here comes Martin Prado. I think Prado. I don't want to say he was a little late, but to Real Muto going after that first pitch, Prado still was getting his gloves on when he came to the plate. Especially after the changeover in the inning, sometimes you get in, put your stuff down, get to the on deck circle, and before he knew it, his number was called. The Brewers have defeated the Mets five to three. Nationals continue to lead the Phillies three nothing in the four. As we told you the Braves have been lapped a few times by the Cubs it's thirteen to two in the ninth in Atlanta. Prado into the bat, pokes it out into center field. A little flare, and that's a hit. More. More clarification from New York on that play. And that is if an infielder is taken into the outfield the nearest infielder to the ball is taken into the outfield then it becomes a reviewable play. The umpires have to decide if it is reviewable they did. And it was reversed. As well, the umpires in New York felt that Dietrich had firm and secure possession of the ball and that he turned to take the ball out of the glove. And the glove actually turned with him. So if the glove turns, that's a key. Glove closed. And then it turned and the ball dropped out. And because he was out on the outfield grass, that becomes a play that can be reviewed. Yelich on a busted bat. Segura gets an out there. 
And the Diamondbacks turn their second double play in Miami. He is finished in the fourth. Here at Chase Field, this is an area where kids can come and burn off some energy during the game. As you can see behind me, an incredible playground with jungle gyms and slides, but more importantly over here, a batting cage so that future Major League Baseball players can come and practice their swing. Take a look at that. This kid's actually pretty good. Jessica Blaylock all over Chase Field. Now there's your first bat flip of the day. <laughs> Gene Sakura smokes one in the center field. Top of the order for the Diamondbacks. Second hit after third at bat for Segura. And here comes Brandon Drury. Arizona already with eight hits to go with their five runs. An early ambush of Conley sends Segura sprawling at first. This is certainly a good time to run if you're Arizona. You're up five. It's early in the game. You've got Segura, pretty good base stealer. He swiped seven. He's been caught four times. And Drury fouls it back to the screen. Marlins headed to San Diego for three. The Padres are actually in Denver right now. And scoreless in the bottom of the fourth. San Diego 11 under at 26 and 37. It'll be the first look for the Marlins at the Padres. Get back home and then get their first look at those Rockies as well. On Friday night, four with Colorado, a couple with Atlanta, and then four with the Cubs. End of the bat, little dribbler, Dietrich. 
will get the out at first. Segura safe passage to second. This telecast is copyrighted and it's presented by the authority. The Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. And I suspect the Diamondbacks would have to sign off on it as well. Maybe get a Derek Hall signature. Goldschmidt now. The scoring on that uh, first inning catcher's interference. Goldschmidt is not charged with an at bat. He does reach base, which he does a lot. He's very good at that. And the error goes to uh, Real Muto. That helped in the uh, Diamondbacks four run rally. See what he's done on the homestand. Goldschmidt neck and neck with Ben Zobrist for on base percentage. And you would expect his slugging percentage will be coming up here steadily. Dietrich can't get it, and it's by him, and it's into right field. And Tagura is going to score from second. It'll go as a hit, but it certainly is a ball that Dietrich will tell you he should have kept on the infield. Uh, just a, uh, one of those where it's almost like he did like the half slide, like he's trying to pop up. Ball hops over his glove. Just a good piece of hitting right there by Goldsmith, just to get a piece of that ball. Just flick the bat at it, hope something good happens. You think about the last uh, two RBI hits for the Diamondbacks. Wellington Castillo, who's at the plate now, remember he had a ball at the end of his bat that spun down the first baseline and into right field. And now Goldschmidt sneaks one through Dietrich. So 6 0 Arizona. And Conley trying to accomplish two things. One, get out and get out of this inning. But two, pitch long enough that the Marlins don't have to burn up some bullpen arms because there's no off day between now and the Padres series. The Diamondbacks certainly got uh, a boost from their catcher in yesterday's ball game, Chris Herman. And Castillo goes the other way this time. This time it's down the third baseline. Goldschmidt to third. Castillo's got a double. Diamondbacks he's two came for out. two. Swinging the bat well, very aggressively. Ball in the middle of the plate. Castillo pulls this one down the line. Goldschmidt makes it all the way to third. Christian Yellich does a good job getting to this ball before it hits the fence. Makes it a whole lot easier to not have to worry about that base runner going. Way to get over there, hustle, cut that ball off. Diamondbacks are in business, though, with second and third with one out, and Peralta's at the plate. Juan Nieves on his way out to the mound. Miami's bullpen is stirring. And for Adam Conley, it's Dustin McGowan who gets up in the Marlins' pen. For Adam Conley, the uh, bumpy first turned ugly. And Arizona now a 6 0 lead. And runners second and third and one out. This matches. Conley's uh, lowest point of the season when he gave up six runs against the Nationals. Peralta now.
Count two and zero. Oh. Infield in. Really not much to lose if you're the Marlins here. I think that was also reflected in that challenge on the pop up. At the time they were down five nothing. And so why not it was a great catch by Pat Shine. In Miami's video room. Good job by Connolly not giving in right here. 2 0 count through him off speed. 2 1 count through Peralta off speed. Now that you got him in that swing mode, maybe you can expand up with a fastball, down with a breaking ball. Real Mucho is just going to have to block it. Uh, and try to get yourself a punch out right here. 2 2. And it's out. Peralta, just a great story, a guy that uh, was a pitcher. Had severe shoulder injuries. Wanted to come back as a hitter. Ended up an independent ball. And now has become an, a nice part of the Diamondbacks. That will be strike three. <laughs> he had uh, jettisoned the bat. And it's a strike. It's got plenty of the plate. It's not high. And Peralta, I'm sure, will look at that up in the video room. And next time he comes to see Angel Hernandez, say, uh, my bad. It's a strikeout, and here is O'Brien, the former Miami Hurricane. And Miami native swings and misses. Three run homer in the first. His numbers were just incredible this year. When he was promoted across all of minor league baseball, he led in home runs with 17. In total bases. He was second amongst all minor leaguers with RBI at 52. His slugging percentage was third best. His OPS was fifth. And that's all across minor league baseball when he was promoted. Of course, he was hitting in Reno, which is a great place to hit. You've got the, the altitude there. Rojas on to first just in time to get the out. Arizona adds on. It's six nothing now. Dodge is the presenting sponsor of Miami Marlins baseball. 
That's product placement at its best. Big Dodge truck. Out in the outfield, that's right field. Marcelo Zuna, Giancarlo Stanton, Chris Johnson. Well, while the Diamondbacks have been knocking around Adam Conley, the Marlins have been baffled by Robbie Ray. A couple double play balls ended the third and the fourth. Ozuna lined to center his first time up. You talk about setting up late. I mean, it's been one of the narratives of the struggles of Giancarlo Stanton. Marcelo Ozuna also has that little toe tap. What's different about Ozuna compared to Stanton right now? Well, Ozuna has a little bit different approach. He, he gets his foot set early. And when Ozuna's front foot is down, the ball is just coming out of the pitcher's hand. And what that does is it allows you to see the ball longer. But when you do that, you have to be careful to not push forward your, with your body towards the pitcher. Watch when his foot gets down right there. See, the ball is almost getting ready to come out. So now you're seeing the release point without your head moving. You've seen the ball without your body sliding for it, and you just get a much better look at it. And it's been evident because of how, how much more Azuna's walking this year, how much better he's, he's swinging at pitches. He's not offering it as many bad pitches. I mean, it's, you're still going to swing at bad pitches occasionally, no matter what you do, but he's maximizing what he can do because he's seen the ball longer, and he even saw that ball as a ball. And he was right. Yeah. Ozuna center field born back and he's there and he makes a catch and Ozuna's hit two balls on the button and both times Michael Bourne has run him down. If you're a baseball fan you need the all new Fox Sports app highlights interviews injury updates scores instant alerts on your favorite teams rivals just download it in the App Store Google Play or visit foxsports.com slash app. OK so. That's all well and good with Ozuna now to Stanton. And his feet and his weight. Okay. The difference is look at when Stanton's front foot hits the ground the ball is already at least halfway to the plate. So now you have to force your body into action a lot quicker. Toe tap down. See that the ball the ball is almost that was really late in my opinion. The ball was look how late his front foot gets down. Toes down there. That ball's 15 feet from the plate. So he has very little time to react. I mean it doesn't have to be as early as Ozuna but you do need to give time to read and react. You know part of part of a swing is in your setup when your foot hits the ground that's your recognition that's when you're reading what the pitch is and you're saying strike and is if your body and your mind holds on to strike then you fire but you're always thinking strike first and then ball and then you just shut it down. It's a strike and what that does is it really puts you in in an area where you really only have one area that you can hit the ball. You got one small zone when you're that late. This is not a small strike zone. That's for sure. Here's the 2 2. That's right down the middle. And that, that's that's an at bat that's indicative of, of to me someone that's just not he's not right not he's in between. You either swinging like that emergency hack on balls that aren't close or you can't pull the trigger because you haven't really recognized it. Geico presents this major league moment. First interleague game, first hit, Daryl Hamilton. First uh, designated hitter of the National League was Glenn Allen Hill. It was on this date. That's back when interleague play was grouped on the calendar where everybody would be playing interleague games, just about everybody. It's back when there were an uneven number of uh, teams in the leagues. That one fouled back 16 and 14 split. Now that there's 15 in each league. The schedule obviously needs an interleague game to work just about every day 
of the week. And who knows if uh, Major League Baseball expands by two teams and then there's 16 teams in each league. Johnson lines one left center field. And that's a two out single. Maybe then you go back to bunching the interleague games together on the calendar. I know what most fans that I've spoken to said they like having the constant interleague games. It gives it gives just a little extra element to the game. And they also like the, the inter, interleague play by itself because you get to see players that 15, 20 years ago you would not have been able to see. You know, there's a lot of people who, uh, when Ichiro was in uh, Seattle, never got to see Ichiro play. There's a lot of people who never got to see uh, Frank Thomas play if they're a National League team. You know, when you're a baseball fan, to be able to not have to leave your home city and see these great players, Hall of Fame cali caliber players, it's a treat. Dietrich bounced out his first at bat. Into the bat, and it rolls out. And Drury makes the play and throws out Dietrich. Halfway through it, it's been all Diamondbacks. Six nothing. at a visitor ballpark. You know that I always love checking that out. Recently, Major League Baseball asked the Diamondbacks on Twitter, what is the best food at Chase Field? And the Diamondbacks said, obviously, it's the churro dog. Now, the churro dog is described as total awesomeness in a donut bun. It's a churro. It's a donut. It's ice cream. It's whipped cream. It's chocolate. It's caramel. It's everything that you want in a dessert. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Guys, this is what I am bringing you up in the booth. It is a good thing that you went to the gym this morning because this definitely does not look like a diet friendly dessert. <laughs> no, it, it is. Oh. It's everything. It's ice cream. It's a dessert. It's probably 2,000 calories. Johnson over to get it. Probably across the bag in time to get the out. <laughs> so, first the bun is a donut, then you got the churro. And then you got the ice cream. Whipped cream. Bring it on, Jess. Speak for yourself. Ah. A little caramel sauce. A little chocolate sauce. Oh. Actually, I was a little heavy on the uh, calorie estimate. A little over 1,100 calories. That's it. And if you find someone to split it with, then you're you feel better about yourself. Rich, I, I think we're getting to feel better about ourselves. <laughs> you might. <laughs> I wasn't in the gym that long. 
Come on, Rich. Ahmed out number one. This is Robbie Ray. What a day for Robbie Ray, huh? We can play tag in the parking lot and run it off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Robbie Ray is shutting out the Marlins. And he's two for two at the plate. Yeah, he is. He had two hits his last start, including a homer against the Rays. And he muscles up, sends one to left. Yelich ventures into the sunlight and makes the catch. Well, if you want to order one of those churro dogs and you're here, you need the ballpark app, right? I mean, that thing will pop right on your screen. You s swipe right because you like it, and it arrives in your seat. All kinds of other cool things you can do with the ballpark app. Go to MLB.com or the App Store and get the MLB.com ballpark app today. Ready for a baseball. Oh, yeah. Got the gloves. Like he's got his glove up, not sitting on his phone, paying attention. That's how you watch a ball game right there. Yeah, and that's a good dad. He gets the inside seat with a glove. Oh, yeah. Up the middle into center field. And that's a base hit. Michael Bourne. He's kind of reborn here right now, getting a chance to play with the Diamondbacks after being released by the Braves out of spring training. Bourne also was signed by Toronto after the Braves released him, and Toronto designated him for assignment. That's one of those things where sometimes a team does you a favor. Uh, they realize there's some openings out there. And, uh, you know, your path maybe to the big leagues or in the big leagues with that team as far as playing time is blocked. So they release you so that some of those teams out there who are seeking what you do can have a shot at you. Gene Segura's got a couple hits. Fouls that one back to the screen. You know, it happens in spring training where there's a guy who may not make the team, but there are other teams looking for, say, a fourth outfield or a utility infielder. The team will release him, and, you know, maybe that guy will get a chance with another ball club to make a big league club. Some good news for the Marlins. Beyond Phoenix, the Mets have lost 5-3 to three to Milwaukee. And the Phillies have woken up and tied the Nationals 3-3. It's bottom six in D.C. Cubs missed an extra point, but they still beat Atlanta 13-2. Still a lot of chatter about the pitchers and the home run hitting contest in the All-Star game. <laughs> Madison Bumgarner is a guy that uh, says he wants to do it. Fans seem to want to see Bumgarner swing it. Jake Arrieta today saying that uh, he's he's a guy that uh, would love to get in there. A little pop into right, and it's caught there by Giancarlo.
Yeah, it's 100, so what? Roof's shut, AC's on. Preston Wilson, Jessica Blaylock, along with Rich Waltz. In what has been, uh, for the Marlins, a rough Sunday so far. It didn't start out well with the Diamondbacks uh, piling on four runs, including Peter O'Brien's three-run homer in the first, and then adding runs in the second and the fourth. And Miami's offense has consisted of three singles, Two of those are raced by double play balls against Robbie Ray. So, sixth inning. Miguel Rojas looks like a Danny Echeverria will pinch hit for Conley. And then JT Real Muto as the Marlins have shown on this trip they've been able to get up off the canvas and rally. But this certainly is a tall order here. And Ray throws a strike and it's one and one. Rojas getting the start at short. McGowan, who was up a couple innings ago, will be the guy that will come in and take over for Conley. Rojas pops this one into shallow right. Peralta charges in and makes the catch. Well, remember it's San Diego, and remember that's a late night with the fish. And South Florida Honda dealers get you ready for that. Tomorrow night, 9.30, Jessica Blaylock is at Petco. Wei-Yin Chen against Colin Ray. Here's Echeverria. Pinch a penny presents him for your consideration. What has been the key for Robbie Ray? He's been getting some easy outs. Pop-ups, weak ground balls. He's been able to throw strikes. But more importantly, he stayed out of the middle of the plate for the most part. Ozuna may have hit him the hardest of anybody today. But for the most part, he stayed on the edges. Uh, he's been able to throw strikes early with his fastball. That allows him to make, make uh, the hitters chase a little bit around with the change up in the breaking ball. Well I guess in the, in the same parlance of a hitter is due. Robbie Ray was due. One in five in a six and a half ERA in his last nine starts. By the way, just to finish the pitchers hitting in the home run contest story, reporters asked Joe Madden if he would be reluctant to let Arietta do it, and he said no. And then they asked him who would win, Bumgarner or Arietta. Madden said he'd probably go with Bumgarner. And he suggested if they do do it, if they have a home run derby just for pitchers, that's the other alternative there, right? Right. Is that they don't make it a, in Madden's words, a all out gorilla home run hitting contest <laughs> where they're taking, you know, 50, 60 swings. You could put uh, Noah Syndergaard in there, Grinky in there. Now, Preston, you've been to an all-star game before. I don't remember this. I have as well. Do they let the pitchers hit in all-star batting practice? They get they get an early, early hitting session. Is anybody in the ballpark at the time? I don't know if anybody's in the ballpark at that time, no. Because they could do it then. Yeah. Maybe during that uh, all-star BP. But, I mean, that's there are a few cases where guys, pitchers are hitting home runs. But we're talking about essentially batting practice is what home run contest is just without the net and the screen. For every pitcher that can hit a bunch of home runs there's at least five players on every team that can hit the ball in the seats at will. Now I understand Madison Bumgarner has done it in games lately and that is a big deal. 
but I don't think most most managers want their their pitchers out there in a home run inning contest. Two two. So nine pitch at bat so far for Echeverria. Well, the problem is now that these guys are going to start getting pitched like position players. And then we're going to see what the real deal is. I sense a little bit of hitter versus pitcher hostility in your commentary here. It's just reality. That's all. <laughs> There's no hostility. I got no dog in the fight. I don't play anymore. <laughs> it's just reality. That's all. I put it like this like we mentioned Ichiro if we put Ichiro against Madison Bumgarner Ichiro win that home run hitting contest. That one foul back and out of play Barry Bonds actually said that the other day. And someone was talking about the home run hitting contest and Bonds really this is the first time he's had a chance to be around Ichiro and see him every day said hey put him in the home run hitting contest. Echeverria fouls it back again. Look at that Fox tracks. It's a it's a <laughs> everything else has been in his own except the three balls that have been called. This will be pitch number 80 coming up for Robbie Ray. 13th pitch of the at bat. This one. Has Goldschmidt in pursuit and he makes a catch. Coors Banquet, timeless moment. 2004, this date, the Giants beat the Orioles 9 6. Bonds and Rafael Palmero both went deep. Third duo of the 500 Homer Club to Homer in the same game. Mays and Aaron and Mays and Banks in the same game. Back early 70s. Real Muto's 0 for 2. He struck out, bounced out. Eighty one pitches. Robbie Ray has been spectacular. For the Diamondbacks, a three hit shutout. One and two. Ray's had good success with his fastball against Real Muto that day. Been able to get it by him a couple times. That's what he tried the first at bat against Real Muto. Went upstairs with the fastball, got him a swing and miss. Another fastball, another foul ball. <laughs> Phillies and Nationals still 3 3 in the game in D.C. Mets have lost. Milwaukee beat them 5 3. Romito hangs in there with a foul ball. The Marlins are chewing up uh, Ray's pitch count, but not getting anybody on base in the process. Echeverria had a 13 pitch at bat. Pitch number 23 is coming up. 
And unbelievably, the Padres and the Rockies are scoreless in Denver. Bottom six. Robbie Ray has been magnificent today. Six shutout innings. Lead it six to nothing. It is time now for a very special delivery oh, hey. to the booth. <laughs> you guys were talking about wanting to split this. No way. You're each getting your own churro dog, and I don't want to see even a single drop of chocolate sauce left on that plate. Oh, wow. I think I just got some chocolate, actually, by the way, on my scorecard. So. Sorry. 11, 11, 1100 <sighs> calories. Worth it. <laughs> Every second. Worth it. 1,100 cal. That's like three hours on the uh, stairman. Is this when I admit that I only had one bite of the churro with a little bit of whipped cream and ice cream on it? Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Thanks. <laughs> well, I the, mean, the, the Marlins could use a, uh, a pick-me-up. So There's enough sugar in that for a pick-me-up. It's going to be a rally. This is a rally churro dog. A That's rally what churro dog. I love That's what it that. Says. Yes. Done. Got to make it about Rally the team. Rally churro dog. Let's do this. Ice cream on a churro in a donut. <laughs> Hang with him. All right. Thank you. That's very nice. You are very welcome. Thanks, Jess. All right. Obviously, we need Dustin McGowan to work a very quick inning. Yes. Before I'm, this thing melts. Yes. I uh, say a few uh, three pitcher or less outs is on the agenda right now, Rich. Brandon Drury is up. Dustin McGowan in for Adam Conley. And Conley's day was a rough one for the young lefty. Five innings, 11 hits, and six runs. Drury strikes out. Got a boy, Dustin. So there's one out. You know, maybe we should if if I mean look press. I think it would be a goodwill gesture if we sent one of these over to Marlins radio to Glenn Gett. So between innings. Or do you think this thing will last. <laughs> I, I mean I don't know what kind of chance this one's got right here for lasting but. This one is starting. I like the sentiment. You like the cinnamon or the? Is there cinnamon in this too? Or the sentiment, Rich. Oh, I got you. 
There is actually, I think, some cinnamon on the churro. It's hard to enunciate when you got donut in your mouth. Goldschmidt up, 1-1 one, one count. Fastball misses in. Oh, that's good, Rich. Sorry, I had to sneak. I had to sneak a little, uh, little bit there. It's, it's good, though. How's your play-by-play? -play? <laughs> I can make it work, Rich. All right, it's all yours. You all got right. it for the next minute. All okay? right, I can make it work. <laughs> Did he hold up? Yes, says Will Little down there at first base. 3-2 count, Goldsmith. <laughs> That's my partners over there in the other booth. You see Glenn Geffner there just passing it over to Dave Van Horn. <laughs> Hard foul down the line. Goldsmith still battles, and Dave Van Horn looks like he's uh, considering what to do with that sure ice cream there. So he's looking at it. It's tough to. Uh, <laughs> Dave's very focused. Now, Geff wants, <laughs> wants in on that right now. Geff wants to eat it, and Dave looks like he's just upset that it's even there. <laughs> How did your uh, your play by play debut go? By the I way? had a nice check play, check check swing called. Will Little said he didn't go. Then a smash foul down the third baseline. Not too bad. <laughs> Gef, Gef's the only guy I know that has to uh, tweet whatever he eats before he eats it. McGowan gets a strikeout, and so McGowan has struck out Drury and Goldschmidt. Oh, look at he's into it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's hard. See, that's the benefit of a headset. Uh huh. You know, Geff doesn't have that. He's got to he's got to go away from the mic and, and into <laughs> the churro. I just love the fact that Dave Van Horn's look on his face like this is utter childishness. That's what he's looking like. <laughs> well, look, we needed something that we needed something to talk about for sure. Yes. And I suspect they needed something to talk about. I agree. So I figured they could use a little something to eat and something to talk about. Wellington Castillo is up right now. Now this is getting interesting because Geff just can't. He's off mic now. That thing doesn't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, nice that the engineer brought napkins. I love the eating the churro dog and then the leaning over to the mic to get the comment in and then right back to the churro dog. Yes, I think Dave is about to say it's up, up, and away. And gone. Good work by Geff. Could work by McGowan to get a strike there. It's three I'm, and one. I'm actually kind of jealous that he's getting to eat it. I got to wait to break. See, with this headset, we got this mic right in front of our mouths. We don't have that that luxury of being able to just shovel it in there. Well, look. I think uh, if you, I think you hang in there for another. To left, Yelich and Preston digging. One, two, three inning by Dustin McGowan. Leg after, and now Preston Wilson knee deep in a ice cream churro.
Sports Floor is brought to you by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. By Checkers, fast foodies know the deal. In Arizona, ah, uh, the old prospector. We saw him early in the telecast. You can't, uh, you can't have a telecast here with us if you're not going to visit Tombstone. Doc Holiday, maybe Marshall Dillon, Wyatt Earp. They're all here. Six nothing, Arizona. This has been a, a tough one for the Marlins for a lot of reasons. Adam Conley knocked around. Six runs in five innings. And then the Marlins have had a rough time against this guy, Robbie Ray. Has struck out four. You can see he's walked no one, 87 pitches. And he's into the seventh. Here's Prado, who takes down low. Christian Yelich, Marcelo Zuna as well. If you guys are wondering at home, this churro dog is incredible. The donut bun is the kicker, though, with the, just perfectly with the ice cream and the sauce. Well, you know, one thing I've realized in watching you eat this is that, yeah, it's a churro in a bun with ice cream and whipped cream and sauce. But the, as you said, the, the bun not only is a donut, it's a chocolate-covered donut. I, yes. I didn't see that. On the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of the pile, it's a chocolate donut, and you're already into the chocolate donut portion. Yeah, and I went so hard at the beginning when I started eating this thing that I snapped my spoon, Rich. I was trying to get as much as I could get in me before the break ended, and uh, I went a little too too hard in the paint on him, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Ahmed. On to first in time. So one out in the seventh. You like fireworks? Well, Friday fireworks for the Fish and the Rockies. Coming up on the 17th, Marlins and Rockies open up a four-game wraparound series, which starts on Friday and ends on Monday. And you got fireworks after the game. You got the burger and beer package for 25 bucks. Those 5,000 kids also get a play ball whipple bat and ball set. Practice your bat flips. Yelich is lined out and bounced into a double play. You know, if I had three of those, I would have taken one to Glenn Geffner and Dave Van Horn, and the other over to Steve Berthieu and uh, BB, Bob Brenly. It, it, it would have had to admit before I tasted it because there's no way I'm letting you get out of the room with two of those after I had a taste of it. That's for sure. Well, I would have only done that had we had three delivered to the booth. Oh, OK. Three and no. Yelich entered the day with lofty numbers. And he takes outside. He'll add to his on base percentage, which has him in the top seven in the National League. Road trip brought to you by JetBlue. Uh, now we're into the uh, submarine portion of the trip. Dick Emberg says, come on in and pull up a chair and spend part of Monday with us, 9 30 for Marlins Live, Tuesday. A night game as well, and then a Wednesday afternoon game for the Marlins return home. Now, everywhere we go, Jessica Blaylock either has something cool planned in the ballpark or around town. Jess, when we get to San Diego, what's on your list? Yeah, on Tuesday, I'm going to meet up with Mike Dunn and Justin Bohr, and we're going to take a tour of the USS Midway, get a private tour of that naval ship, and then we're going to put together a piece all about it. So we know, of course, with both Bohr and Mike Dunn, their ties to the military and the government. So that's going to be a really cool trip with those two ballplayers. That is always a, a great part of San Diego. Marcelo Zuna drives that ball deep, but he hooked it. Foul. That's way up into that second deck. 
the military uh, community around San Diego is uh, always fun. Justin Bohr's father in the uh, Secret Service up in Washington, D.C. Mike Dunn, of course, his charity, Done for All, um, has benefited the military and veterans. And I would expect for both those guys, especially for Dunn, the, uh, the game that the Marlins and the Braves are going to play on that Sunday night in Fort Bragg, if you have a chance, go on Twitter or on the Internet and search for that ballpark. They have pictures of that ballpark being constructed. And it's really, really cool. Essentially a, a ballpark on a military base. Marlins and Braves would play a major league game on it. That's on the 3rd of July, a Sunday night. And then after the uh, after the ball game, that field will be used as a recreational spot for the base. But the field itself is down and, and they obviously have to bring that up to Major League Specs. And they have the uh, bleachers and stands going in around the field. Now Stanton. For Stanton, the struggles have continued in this one. He's popped out and struck out. One for nine in the series. I would expect Preston one of the hardest things to do for a hitter as proud as Stanton is as hard as he works is to relax. Well it, it's hard to relax because it's so relentless it's every day it's you can relax when you have a day or two in between games to try to shut it down but baseball doesn't work that way. So you really have to try to find some way to quiet your mind cut out all the background noise and get back to doing what you've always done. But that's the thing when you're in this deep and long a valley there is so much noise and a lot of it it's hard to filter it out. I am noticing something about Stanton. I've seen him take more swings where his top hand is released than I have in a very long time and I have to wonder if that's maybe a bad habit that got started when his side was injured that backside was injured the back oblique area. Because when you do that you want to let that let that top hand go to not cause as much torque on that ob oblique on your right side. So I wonder if that, there's some lingering effects from that too. Chopper out towards Segura. Stanton threw his bat after that swing. And the Marlins are done in the seventh.
Arizona on top time now for the AT&T high speed replay. A dessert that has its own song. I like it. How about that? That guy looked like a little Rojo Johnson Jr. there getting the mature dog, didn't he? <laughs> Rojo Johnson. Very nice. Bring Will Farrell into it. No, it's a Rich Walt song with Preston Wilson here in Phoenix. It's been a tough one for the fish. Uh, Robbie Ray has been shutting him out. Adam Conley wasn't sharp. For whatever reason, this is a Marlins team that has had trouble against teams that on paper you would think they should handle. They dropped two or three. In Minnesota, they've had trouble against the Braves, and they did sweep the Diamondbacks in Florida. But uh, the Diamondbacks have a sizable lead late here. Well, Zach Godley did a good job against them last night, moving the ball around. Even after his struggles early with command, was able to really come back and pitch a really nice game. Showed some good curveballs, some good changeups, threw a lot of strikes, and the same thing today. Robbie Ray has thrown a lot of strikes. He's been able to get. The Marlins batters on their heels and here's something that we haven't seen Cole Gillespie getting some time at first base. He's been working at it and Chris Johnson is across the diamond. He's going to go over to third. And so Martin Prado comes out. Second inning for Dustin McGowan ball in the air. Yelich is there and he makes the catch. Gillespie played some infields in the minor leagues and in college. He can play all three outfield spots. This this action right here just increases value by another 10% I believe. Just being able to be in the game at first base in a big league game that increases your value. Now it's another thing you can tell teams that you can do. Well especially in the National League. It was really an interesting feel being in that series in Minnesota as O'Brien with the three run homer back in the first is up and watching how Paul Molitor had eight relievers and would use seven guys a night for an not even an inning a piece but a batter a piece and then not have to use anybody on a, a really short bench because American League game pitching changes are clean and you don't have to double switch you don't have to change pitchers depending on scoreboard. Thus you don't need as many pieces or versatility as National League rosters or managers for that matter need. And for Gillespie his first major league action at first. O'Brien swings and misses he's one for three. Since that three run homer. We talked about the pair of ex hurricanes, O'Brien and Chris Herman. And that foul tip held by Real Muto. University of Miami defeated Boston College today to win that super regional and head to the College World Series. Arizona, of course, is down the road in Tucson. Arizona, there are a lot of Wildcat fans up in this area. They are in as well, and Miami and Arizona will tangle in their first game at the College World Series. Florida State and Florida, I believe, is just about to start. You see Santa Barbara. A walk off grand slam to beat Louisville today on Louisville's field. And so both the Arizona and the uh, Golden Gauchos able to advance to Omaha. Ahmed from Yukon. There you go. There's a Wildcat hat. Oh, did Barry attend Arizona State? Barry Bonds? Oh, yes. That's right. Absolutely. He was a Sun Devil.
There's an A State t shirt there. With the trident on the front. Bouncer to third. And Gillespie gets his first action there. Nicely done. Justin McGowan's looks sharp. He's retired all six. He's faced. Arizona on top. Valley of the Sun, and it's starting to heat up. It was not uh, that warm. Well, look, it was warm. It was hot, but we're used to coming here 108, 110, and the temperatures the last couple of days were actually mid-90s, so that's not bad. That's been really good. I remember one time I came here, and the buses are right at the plane when you get off the plane, and so you got to walk down the stairway and I really felt like someone was standing in front of me with a blow dryer in my face when I got off the plane. That's how hot it was here. But not bad. Very nice here. Actually, believe it or not, I actually got a little chilly here in the, in the, in the uh, what do you call it, the stadium, the, the arena, the, the dome stadium, the roof stadium. I could put my jacket on. Here's the AC is working really good in the booth in here. That was the uh, three pounds of ice cream you ate, my friend. Well, there, there's that. Chris Johnson is up. Derek Dietrich. I, th I thought we were on the same team, Rich. No, we're not. Okay. Yeah, we are. Come on. You man. know what? They, they say baseball is, is an individual sport disguised as a team sport. I understand that extends to the booth now. Thanks. There you, there you go. There's thanks, the thanks for clearing that up for me. Well, the reason, <laughs> the, the reason <laughs> Preston was quiet there for a second in, in seeing the Arizona State <laughs> shirt, I had to show him. The curtain of distraction. <laughs> there it is. There's the shirt. The curtain of distraction at Arizona State basketball games is one of the really fun things in uh, all of college sports. It is. It's, uh, it's a very unique deal. It, it can be disturbing and entertaining at the same time. And they get into it. They sell out for it. If you get a chance to YouTube uh, curtain of distractions in basketball, check it out. I don't know that there's a baseball equivalent to that. I don't think there is. Unless you could stand behind home plate and do something, but. Yeah, normally they don't let college students behind home plate. Now, those two guys have been here throughout. We saw them early in the game. They actually found it, Arizona Rich. They, I love that. <laughs> I love the, the hats. I, I love the, the hats, very similar to what we saw in that clip about an inning and a half ago. Ichiro fan. He'll be starring in Ip Man 4. Wait till you see it. It's a great movie. But right now he's just taking out some time to come check out Ichiro. Probably going to get an Ichiro at bat before this one is done. Ichiro. 
has not been used in the ball game. Chris Johnson takes in. Robbie Ray is uh, trying to go someplace he's never gone before, and that's eight full innings in a start. Seven and two thirds last year in Arlington against the Rangers. Three two fastball, and Johnson strikes out. Fish family, the exclusive loyalty program of Marlin fans. Champs is the code word. 2001 world champions, skippered by Bob Brenly. Fueled by Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling in that starting rotation. Derek Dietrich has bounced out twice. This is a three hit shutout right now for 24 year old Robbie Ray. Randall Delgado to righty, Zach Curtis to lefty. They're in the bullpen. Oh, Robbie Ray, 95. We've seen him around 93 today. I don't know if I've seen a 95 from him. So 113 pitches. This is the most he's ever had in a major league start. 112 was his previous high. That was in Colorado. Well, he looks so relaxed out there. He hasn't had very many tense moments today. He's working, but he's not laboring. That I think was part of the real surprise last night when Jose Fernandez had the wheels fall off after being perfect into the six with two outs and nobody on and then all of a sudden five hitters later he'd given up four runs Dietrich going after a high fastball. And Robbie Ray now with two outs here in the eighth. And his manager Chip Hales on his way out. Well deserved. A West Kendall Toyota call to the pen.
Stone on top. Robbie Ray out. Randall Delgado in. Miguel Rojas in the box. And Ichiro is on deck. But there's two outs here in the eighth. And a fastball from Delgado, a strike. Delgado. A lot of innings. A lot of appearances. And lately he's been really good. You know, 068 ERA. His last 11 times out there. One of the few Diamondbacks players you see with those pants hiked up. You can't really see that detail at the bottom of the pants with the little snake print pattern, the scale pattern, because he's got those pants all hiked up there around knee high. Slowly hit Drury across the diamond. Whether it's Robbie Ray or Randall Delgado. It's been tough going for the Marlin Bats today. Eight. Tomorrow, Wei in Chen gets the baseball. Petco Park. Colin Ray goes for San Diego. 13th start for both. And their numbers are very similar. And it's tomorrow. That's game one. Two night games in San Diego. Tom Fuller, Drew Pomerantz on Tuesday. Wednesday afternoon, Justin Nicolino and to be announced by the Padres. Phil Goslin makes, uh, I believe, his first appearance in this series. I believe you're right, Rich. Justin McGowan misses down low. This was an Adam Conley start. Five innings, 11 hits, and six runs. He threw 92 pitches, two strikeouts, a walk. McGowan, with two very nice innings so far, being asked to stretch it to three. And if he's able to get through three, obviously it won't be in any game story and it won't really jump out of the box score. But if he's able to keep everybody in Miami's bullpen just in a seated position and get to San Diego tomorrow night with what would be a off day for them today in terms of throwing and workload, that would be. A nice thing. Well, McGowan had a rough outing in Minnesota, but to come here and help your team out by eating up these innings, keeping everyone else out of the action, I mean, to me, that's in some way a win. Or you don't want to lose games and you don't want to get swept, but you do have to find positives because you're 
as soon as this game's over, it's time to start considering the next game. And that's going to be a big part of it. The Phillies have actually taken a lead in that ball game in D.C. It's bottom nine now at Nationals Park, 4 3 Phillies. To right and foul. Marlon saw some of Goslin with the Atlanta Braves. Oh, good pitch. That ball had some drop on it. That's a 92 miles an hour two seamer. And it had some splitter action on it. Watch this thing die. Started out at the bottom of the strike zone. It's a strike out of his hand. It's a ball at the plate. And good luck with that, Goslin. Just as an interesting twist in that Phillies Nationals game, Phillies got the run in the top of the ninth. Mikel Franco off of. Jonathan Papelbon. Probably a few fans in Philly enjoy that. We told you earlier that the Mets have lost. 5-3. Milwaukee beat the Mets. St. Louis is all over Pittsburgh. 8-2. That's in the sixth. Cardinals seem to have, uh, I don't want to say righted the ship, but seem to be trending upwards. If they can win this ball game, it'll be five straight for St. Louis. And Pittsburgh, on the other hand, would suffer their fifth straight loss. Marlins opponent tomorrow San Diego trailing in Colorado 2 1 now bottom eight. Marlins live presented by Checkers hosted by Jessica Blaylock right here Chase Field. I get it. That Robbie Ray. Reference, I get it. <laughs> Michael Bourne. Dietrich to first in time to get the speedy Bourne. You know, it feels like Michael Bourne with one swing of the bat changed this series. Doesn't it? I mean, it's if Jose gets that last out of the sixth inning, it's two nothing. Jose's feeling good, but Bourne homered, and just like that, it all kind of melted. I believe you're 100% correct. With two outs in that inning, nine hole hitter Michael Bourne really swung this series. Hitting that home run. Really took the momentum away from the Marlins at that point. And they haven't recovered since. Gene Segura. Uh, but, you know, the fact of the matter is, Zach Godley yesterday had only given up four hits at that point a home run and three singles to Prado. The home run was by Ozuna, and the three singles to Prado were the only hits that Godley gave up in that two, you know, the two runs that went against him. So really, Jose had to almost be perfect to hold on to that game and ended up giving up a few runs in the sixth inning, four runs in the sixth. 
Zach Godley, of course, from your hometown, your high school. Did you get a chance to get down and chat with him? I did. I went down on the field, spoke to him. for. We must have chatted for about a good half hour on the field. And uh, just talking about stuff from back home, talking about uh, his experience here in the big leagues, and uh, pretty interesting stories about how he came to pitch. Well, there's two outs, and it counts three and two. Yeah, we won't get you, into it. You, right don't, you don't have the Cliff's Notes version of the condensed. Well, originally he wasn't a pitcher. In a junior year, the high school coach came to him and said, let me see you pitch. And he said, Coach, I hit you three times last year, throwing from the outfield during the infield, and you're sitting in the dugout. You really want me to pitch? Long story short, he gets on the mound, sees the gun, light up. But the only problem with the gun lighting up is the pitch that actually lit up the gun went over the catcher, over the fence, behind the catcher. But my coach, my old high school coach, J. David Horton, looked at the gun and said, well, you're going to pitch. We just got to figure out how you're going to do it. From then on, got drafted by the Mets, ended up at Tennessee after junior college stint at Southern uh, Spartanburg Methodist University. Gets drafted, and he's in the big leagues. Yes, he is. Hey, now. Liner off of Dietrich's glove and into center field. And that's a base hit. Boy, for Dietrich, there's been a, a few adventurous balls out there today. You know, one thing watching that play, I wonder if Dietrich got screened by the umpire and lost sight of the ball going from one side of the ump to the next. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I do, but I don't, I don't know. That's possible. I'm not. I'm, it's just an observation. All right. It's possible. I mean, it's, it's seeing it from this angle behind home plate is one thing, but it's hard to see how he saw it from the position that he was in. But it may have screened him a little bit. Well, the result is a Goldschmidt at bat with runners at the corners, and Preston was able to finish his story. I'm sure you rather would have finished it. <laughs> yeah. Back when uh, Segura had two strikes on him. Well, he also told me just you know being from South Carolina in such a small area, they didn't get to see many Major League Baseball games. You know, there's not really much coverage of it there. The, the Atlanta Braves are the closest team, three, four hours drive away. So the first Major League game that he says that he believed he actually saw was the game that he pitched in. But what it did was it made him to not be so in awe of some of the guys he was facing. His first strikeout happened to be a, you know, as a pitcher happened to be a right-handed batter from Milwaukee named Ryan Braun, and he had no idea that Ryan Braun was as great as he was. It didn't matter to him. He's like, everybody saying, man, you know who that is you struck out? And he was like, oh, that guy? <laughs> like, yeah, that's just a former MVP. Goldschmidt, couple hits. 12 total for Arizona. That's Johnson to Gillespie in time. Three scoreless innings for McGowan. 6 nothing to the ninth.
you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By Dodge, visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. And by your South Florida Honda dealers. Yeah, the wagon is just about to leave town. Six nothing, Arizona on top. And those are our drivers right there. Ichiro. Hope you had a chance to watch Marlins live. Terrific feature on NHK, National Television Network in Japan. They have been following Ichiro since 2001 when he arrived in Seattle, televising a lot of his games. And they are here today and will be following Ichiro for a lot of his games moving forward. Pass ball is a strike. First, Jake Barrett, as he's in. Ichiro 2,974. He had a pinch hit in yesterday's ball game. So he's 26 away as well. And this for the NHK fans and all of Japan, they are really fascinated with Pete Rose's number of 4,256. And with his hits in Japan and here in Major League Baseball, Ichiro is four hits away from uh, tying Pete Rose. Ichiro is not a guy that uh, champions that mark. He says, you know, if, if people are into it, great. If people say it's it's different. That's fine too. Fastball away. And it's three and one. And that's out, and Ichiro walks. I saw some footage of Ichiro in Japan, and he's like the Beatles all rolled up in one person. Oh, yeah. Every time, he's the biggest rock star, the biggest personality. I mean, he's such a humble, quiet guy that it's hard to imagine him causing that much hysteria. But, man, he is really, he's really a national treasure over there. He, go, he can't go anywhere. It's, it's amazing. Oh, without question. When he, I was in Seattle when he arrived in Seattle. And just to see that whole phenomenon, to see 60, 70 media members traveling everywhere, the coverage he got. There was one camera person whose job, his only job, was to get the shot of Ichiro walking out of the clubhouse runway, up the steps of the dugout, and out onto the field. Every day. That's that, it. That, that was his job. That was his job. Get that shot, send it back to Japan, and you're done for the day. <laughs> That's when you know you're the man. And he's so cool. I mean, you gotta admit, each he talk about cooler than the other side of the pillow. That's Ichiro. He like he's he's got that Japanese chic way he dresses. That's gonna turn into a double play. With Segura and Ahmed combining on that. Ichiro is erased. And Barrett has two outs here in the ninth. Cole Gillespie came about 10 to 15 feet last night from tying up the ball game, being a hero. Or was it to put him ahead by one almost? He almost hit a grand slam last night. It would have been a three run shot. Three run shot. Would have put him ahead though. Yep. It's a good swing on a 3-1 pitch. Just didn't quite get it off. But a really good aggressive swing. Good at bat.
That misses. It's three and one to Gillespie. Yelich is on deck. So Ichiro has it at bat, but he walks. Let's see if he's. Uh, you would expect that one of the games in San Diego, quite possibly the day game after the night game, he might start. Gillespie. That's Segura, and that's not right. And Arizona wins it. Gillespie robbed of a hit. And the Diamondbacks, their bullpen behind Robbie Ray, complete the shutout of the fifth. What a play right there by Segura. That's 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 when you have a shortstop playing second base. You got that range and the arm to be coupled with it. Great baseball game by the Diamondbacks. They got good pitching. They got great defense up the middle. And they got some big time hitting from O'Brien. If you're looking for something to smile about, and we are because cricket is into that, and so are we. Dustin McGowan. With three shutout innings, that'll help save the bullpen you would expect for San Diego. But for the Marlins, they've dropped the first two series on this road trip. They dropped two of three to a last place team in Minnesota. And they dropped two of three here to the Diamondbacks. And so it's on to San Diego to try to get going. And that series opens tomorrow night. Marlins Live opens in a couple minutes. So stick around. Jessica Blaylock on the field.